Well, we want to thank God for allowing us to be here. Thank God for Apostle giving us an opportunity to minister. And once again, any time that we minister or anybody ministers here, it's under uh, the grace of God and Apostle's eye. It's all about training and developing as we are a world training center. Exactly. Miss Betty back there looking so good. Good to see you. All the way from West Virginia. Hallelujah. It's good to see you. Gateway is in West Virginia. Yes, it is. That's right. Exactly, exactly. Got Gateway in Texas. Yeah, we got Gateway everywhere. Gateway in New York. Or that's where you're um, at, Logan, right? Yes, sir. Megan, yeah. Okay, yeah. Gateway in New York. So we just thank God for the opportunity. I won't be here before you long. Just wanted to minister to you. Um, Very simple message from our heart. And really, it was, um, this message really was, before it was given to you, it was given to me or for me, let's just say that. Uh, I was thinking about some scripture and pondering over the scripture. And I was just um, applying that scripture to my life. And as I was doing that, um, I was writing things down, down personally for myself. And, uh, and then uh, when I had the opportunity to minister to you today, um, it just came to me that, hey, what you're using, uh, what Apostle tells us, you, ca- you can't, people don't receive what you preach, okay? People receive what you live, okay? So you can tell your child to do whatever, 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 but if it's not operating in you, then they're not going to receive what they keep hearing a lot of times. Well, they will receive what they hear also, but they also will, will abide by and follow what they see and what's a part of you. So I'm just going to give you what's a part of me. So if you have your Bibles, let's turn to um, Isaiah 40. And it's in me, but I had some points that I wanted to, to point out to you, and that's why I'm looking at the paper. I truly feel that I can just minister just by talking and walking. Uh, to you, but I wanted to uh, uh, make sure I have some things down for you. So, I'm going to show you how this message came about, and then we're going to minister to you, and then, and then that's it. Um, it comes from Isaiah. I was meditating on thinking about Isaiah 40, uh, chapter, um, chapter 40, verse 31. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And I was just pondering on that. Uh, Apostle was preaching and ministering to us a couple of weeks ago about meditating, about meditating the word. And success in your life is based upon uh, meditating the word day and night. Now, reading is a part of meditation, but Uh, Reading is not just meditation alone. So when you ponder it, when you look it over, when you inspect it, look it over again, look through it, look around it, as much as you can assimilate it into your daily walk of life, that's really when you're meditating on the word of God and you just begin to meditate. And as I was meditating um, the word of God, four things, four things came, came to me. Um, the, the first word was relax. And then the second word was reflect. Um, the, four, um, the third word was um, uh, project. And then the last word was proceed. And so I just want to minister to you from those, those four words today. Um, I'm going to give you the definition of relax for those who like to read or those who are real Um, analytical or those who really like to write things down or reference things. Um, The word relax means to become less tense or stiff, to stop worrying, uh, to rest, uh, to do something enjoyable. Um, I I have a reference here in Hebrews that I'm going to look at. So those who, who really cleave to your Bibles as far as that you can look turn with me and that's going in Hebrews and that's looking at the fourth chapter and when you're reading you can read through the 
the sixth through the um, the eleventh verse. Okay. In that um, six through eleven is basically just telling us that Jesus is our our rest. He is our rest. He provided a grace for us to to walk in. He provided us an opportunity as we fellowship with him to to stop doing things our way based on our strength and based on how we do things, to always go by willpower and always go by what we're thinking. So it's based on your 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 or your your education, it's based on your smarts, it's based on all the things that you can do. Uh, that's when you're doing that, you're you're really working hard. All right. You're really working hard. And that's not the rest that he wants us to to to, to enter into. He wants us to do things his way. And when we do things his way and we go by his plan, there is a grace, there is, a, there is his presence which provides a, an ability to do the things that he wants you to do. And when you're in partnership with him doing the things that he wants you to do, then everything flows. Now, you will have obstacles. You know, you will have obstacles, but you're not beating yourself up because you're not using your strength. It's based on the Lord's strength. And, and when we can abide by that and walk in that, then, then we can really uh, operate in and move in the areas in our life that we need to move in. Um, but don't want to get too super spiritual with it or really not being super spiritual, but in some people's eyes you may be. But this basically, when we're talking about this rest, just relax. I'm using a key example. This, this, uh, these holidays, these last couple of days, have you relaxed? Okay. How you been fighting every... Uh, Pastor Andrew was just sharing a song with me uh, I, as far as going through and you're shopping and, and you're fighting and, every, and everybody that you're fighting with. But have you rest? Have you actually taken some time just to rest, just to relax? I know it seems super spiritual, but just sit down somewhere and just relax. Take a walk, maybe through somewhere like that. Just to walk. Um, cup of coffee, soda, whatever, sit down and just listen to absolutely nothing if you can or to listen to the music that you want to. The reason why we're talking about relaxing is because um, most of your great men and women will tell us that especially us when we're going and we're trying to pray and be everything that God wants us to be, most of the time our mindset is so rigid that God can't get any new information to you. And because of that, we, we get in the way. And so apostle tells us a lot of times, you know, you pray, you pray, you pray, and then when you're at that point, usually between sometimes when you're between sleep or you don't know when you sleep or if you're awake or not or when you sleep, a lot of times the problem that you've been dealing with, uh, finally because you rest or relaxed to a degree that the Holy Ghost can actually give you the answer through to you and then you wake up the next day and you say man I, I, I know what to do with the problem it is because we've relaxed enough that we allow God to do something it's like apostle just said earlier we just get out of his way sometimes and when we can get out of his way then he will, he will give us the answers that we need so that's the first word that I want to deal with you is just relax so just relax I'm not going to bring you through a breeze, breathing session uh, but but it's just good to just relax and stop trying to fix things and do things and just relax and, and, and allow God to do things with you. Praying in tongues is so key in this element, okay? Praying in tongues is so important because he's, he's dealing with your spirit and he's building up your spirit and we've been taught this at, through the word and through our possible. I, I like to give credit where credit is due where I learn things from. I, know, I learned it from the Lord, true. But, but apostles have taught us these things that when you continue to pray, our mind begins to change or our mindset begins to change from the inside out, right. okay? And when that happens, it comes from by praying in tongues a lot of times. Well, why are these people praying in tongues? And you notice a lot of people are thrown off by people who pray in tongues because they pray in tongues loud. They probably pray in tongues in a public assembly, make an idiot of themselves, and, and the most snakiest, low downness will will lie to anything, sleep with anything, 
hit anything, fight anything. All right, but just because that's a rep- just because the people um, do that, that doesn't mean God is that way. All right, has nothing to do with God. Okay, it just has to do with the with the character flaws in that person. All right, so so so, but the Holy Ghost is key when it comes down to developing our character from the inside out. And if the person that's acting that way continues to pray, they will change as well. All right, but most of the time, people who do that only pray for about three minutes in front of everybody and when they're at home they don't pray and that's the problem all right let's go to the let's go to the next one the next one uh first one was relaxed let's go to um uh reflect and reflect is to think deeply or carefully about uh, to review and i have some scriptures for you so really reflecting is about reviewing and that's one thing that, that will be good before you enter into this new year uh, is to take some time and just reflect. Sit down with a pen and paper or pencil and paper and just write down, just reflect the things that's been going on. Do a review of, your, of, of this year. Do a review. You know, what's been going on? Uh, I got a scripture for you. It's in uh, 1 Corinthians. Let's look at that real quick. 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. It says, for if we judge ourselves, and we're, we're dealing with communion, and we've been taught this about communion, how, how dangerous it is sometimes when we don't discern the Lord's body, when we don't discern ourselves, that we don't discern our brothers, we don't appreciate each other, we're unthankful, we're unholy, all those different types of things. But let's just focus on 31 when it says, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So if we judge ourselves, then all the things that come with judgment from someone else or, or then we don't have to worry about those things when we judge ourselves. When we sweep around our own front door, when we clean up our own mess, yeah. then it makes our life so much easier. I know Jesus talks about it that, you know, don't cast your pearls before the swine and when they come, they're in you with it because a lot of times we, we will um, um, put things out there that we're so great and we're so this and we're so that and we really haven't dealt with the issues of our life and then when we say those things the very the very, the, the enemy itself will come and inspect where we are with what we're saying most of the time we say a lot of things but we're not doing it you know when it comes down to judging ourselves so we need to judge ourselves and while you're writing things down judge yourself how have how have you been this year have you been thankful this year just do a review over the whole year. Have you been thankful this year? Have you been grateful this year? You know, um, got a couple things. Um, have you been selfish this year? Has everything been about you? Can you review some of the statements or look over the, some of the statements that you made over the year? Has it been a lot of I? Has it been a lot of my? If those are a lot of statements that you've been saying, then, you know, you, you really, you know, look at yourself as far as selfishness. You know, is that something that's there? What about justifying? You know, making excuses for the way we, we behave. And instead of saying, yes, I'm responsible for it. That's my behavior. I have to own it. I got to eat that. That was me. We push it off on other people. No, it's because of so-and-so that I'm here. It's because of so-and-so I'm the way I am. It's because of so-and-so I act the way I act. I never act this way until they come. No, you and I act the way we act because of what's operating inside of us. Now, they may, when they come to, a person may come to, it may aggravate it, but that aggravation is not in them. That aggravation is in you and it's in me. So we have to look over this year. Have we been selfish? Have we, uh, and have we been um, um, justifying? Have we been manipulative? Have we been trying to control things? How, have we tried to be the puppet master of everything in our life? Do we try to coerce people to, to fall in line with what we want? 
you know, I don't care if it's children, spouse, um, employer, um, our pastor. Are we trying to manipulate these, our, our pastor, are we trying to manipulate these people to do what we want? You know, remember Pastor Andy was just up talking about what God wants is our heart. If our heart is full of manipulation and selfishness and justification and all those different type of things, we're in a bad place. We're in a bad place. And so these things we need to work on, you know, as far as when it comes down to reviewing. And I'm, pre and, and, I'm, and I'm ministering to you this, but I'm ministering to you this only because uh, that's what I, you know, that's what I had to, to do. I had to write these things down. Am I being manipulative? Am I trying to control things outside of my control? Am I being dishonest? Are you being dishonest? Are you trying to get your own way? You know, are you always trying to make yourself look good? Instead of people look, making people look bad. Are you being prideful? Okay. Uh, and unthankful. All right. And then uh, the next thing is what about uh, when it comes down to reflecting? Let's look at Galatians 6 and 4. It won't be too much longer. I just want you to get what I have. Galatians 6 and 4. It says, but let, e but let every man prove his own work or in some uh, translations, let a man examine himself and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and, and not in another. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, I wrote down right here. Each must examine uh, their, themselves and not others, but according to the word. All right. So, you can't, you have to examine yourself. But when you're examining yourself, a lot of times we examine ourselves based on what somebody else is. We compare ourselves to each other. I don't know what you went through to get what you got. I don't know what you're going through now. You see people that, that, that may seem like they have it all together, maybe in one area of life, area of their, area of their life, but then they're, 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 they're broken in another area. And then it may appear in one area that they're doing fine, but really it, it's just, a, just a, a mirage. And that may be you. And that may be me in some areas of our life. We just, it, it just is not adding up. We need to work on ourselves. And then when we work on ourselves, we'll rejoice when I've made pro positive progress according to the word. I made positive progress that, that I have rejoicing in that. I'm not trying to prove something to somebody. I'm not trying to do something to see who's looking to get pats on the back. But I'm trying to be confident in my relationship with God saying, this is what you've made me to be. Your word says this. I believe exactly what your word says. And now I'm going to work on it. And I'm going to receive your grace by faith. And I'm going to see that develop in my life. Not to be prideful, boastful, but just to be everything you said I can I can be and have peace in doing it and have peace in doing it. Are these the, are these the, uh, the things that we're doing? So, so that's in Galatians. I have one more scripture I believe I want to give to you. It's in Matthew 7 and 5. And, and you don't have to turn there, but it talks about taking uh, the, beam, uh, uh, the beam out of your eye so you can get the mote out of your brother's eye. A lot of times when we see the problems that other, everybody else has, it's basically because we're really looking at ourselves. We're saying that everybody else has problems, but really you're, you're looking at a reflection of what's, 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 what's the obstruction in your eye. And so when we're reviewing and writing these things down, it's good to do deep, deep, deep inventory on yourself. Deep inventory on yourself as far as if this is my mindset, because if you don't deal with this mindset, it's, it's going to carry over. It's going to carry over to the next year. And, and, and as long as you got yourself with you, you know, and, and you're not changing, it's going to be the same thing over and over again. It's going to be Groundhog Day every day <laughs> for the rest of your life because you're not dealing with the problem. And the problem is, is us, our, uh, is our mindset. So that's, that's another one right there. Um, and then um, the last thing, well, not the last thing, but a question I have, the next to the last thing I want to ask is, what about Jesus in all this? What about Jesus? in your review because he's the one you're going to have to see face to face I love my wife I really do 
I think my wife would, uh, and I, I'm, I'm a lot bigger than she is, but she will protect me as much as she possibly can. She will. She will. But that day, I can't. She can't be with me. I got to see Jesus face to face. How we prioritized our life, that Jesus is the center of our joy, is he's the priority. Or, or, you know, or, or are we, you know, is he's the focus? Is that the main thread throughout your life that I can see? Or if I go to your job, you're somebody else at work, you're somebody else at home, you're somebody else at church, you're somebody else with the fellows or with the girls, you're somebody else in the supermarket. You got five, six different personalities. Yeah, what are we dealing with? Is Jesus the focus? Is Jesus the center? Because if Jesus is not the center, then today we need to prioritize him as being the center. And you know whether or not he is your center. Do you clam up? Do you hesitate when you're talking to friends, different people, and, and, and your normal conversation or your normal uh, lingo or language that you would, that you would speak? Do, do you cut that off because, because of somebody else around you? That kinda, that's, it's an identifier of whether or not you, 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 you kind of peeking and hiding or you're changing your, changing your spots a little bit. Yeah. So it's, it's very important, you know, when you're reviewing. Let's look at Luke 15, not too much longer. Luke 15. And then Luke 15, let's look at... Um, Uh, well, we won't worry about that. I think we've said enough on that one. The next, the next one will be projection. So we talked about relaxing. We talked about reflecting. And now we're going to talk about uh, projecting. And to project means to estimate. It means to forecast. It means to plan. And so once we've already relaxed enough that we allow God's word and what God's, God's will is through his word to be, you know, to, to be in our life, we relax. He's given us some perspective. And then we did a review already of, of how we live throughout the year and what we need to work on, which is very key. The next thing is, well, all right, we want to project. We want to go to the next stage. All right, this is what I've done right. This is what I've done wrong. It's not as far as a naughty or nice list, but it's just some things in my life. I just want to see myself as I am. I just want to see it. And then we're going to projecting. What do we want to do? Well, we want to, for this, for this, for this new year, you know, and for this new time, we want to project what we want. We want to project the things that we want to do. So we want to plan. Let's uh, look at uh, Jeremiah uh, 29, most of you know it and won't even turn there because you know it, you know it by, uh, by heart. I'll read it to you. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. This is the Lord. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not evil, and to give you an expected end. I love that, to have an expected end. And our success is based on, uh, our success is based on this, his plan. So he has a plan. He has a thought when it comes down to you about your life. He has a plan already. So wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be better, just, just conducive, just to follow that plan because he knew you before you was even known, before you even existed. Your mother or father even existed. He knew you. Before you was in your mother's womb, he, he knew you. And he, and he detailed your life to the point that he knows your likes and dislikes. There's some things that you dislike that you don't even know you dislike yet. There's some things that you love that you haven't even experienced yet. And he knows all that. And he, curt and he made that all a part of your life. And so wouldn't it be better just to follow that plan? And so that's the plan that we need to follow. And, and in writing it down, projected, I want to follow, uh, Lord, I want to follow uh, uh, your plan. Now, let's look at, uh, uh, well, Proverbs, I want, Proverbs 14 and 12 says, there's a way that seems right unto a man, and, but the end thereof is death. So we have plans that we have laid out, but we don't know the future. We have plans that we've laid out, 
that we don't even know exactly everything that we like or dislike. We have plans laid out that we don't know the next second, the next day, but he does. And so it's better to have Jeremiah 29 and 11 as the lead instead of, uh, instead of what we desire to be the lead. So now I have a couple of scriptures that I want to have for you. Um, Jeremiah 33 and 3. And this is for the person that says, okay, I hear what you're saying. You're saying that God has a plan for me and I don't know my plan and you're ticking me off or you're kind of, you know, um, I hope, you know, I'm, I'm playing, you're pissing me off um, because, I, you know, you, you're saying all this stuff and I do want to get my life, you know, better with the Lord, not that I don't have a relationship with God, but I want it better. How can I get it better? Well, Jeremiah 33 and 3 tells you this. He says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He's saying, yes, you don't know. I do. And because I do follow my plan. And if you follow my plan, I have great success for you. If you're familiar with Gateway at any moment in time, then you know that that's what, that's what, uh, that's what tongues, once again, is so vital because when you pray, you're praying out your destiny. God sends us the helper in the person of the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost, but he's the helper. He's not the doer. So he will only help you if you're sincere about getting to a different level of your life and experiencing the highs and lows. Because I like cartoons. I like Marvel. I like all that stuff. As old as I am, out you put on a Marvel movie, I'm watching. You put on cartoons, Thundercats right now, I'm still watching. Okay? Why is that? Because the characters in there, they live. They live. And everything that they experience is not peachy. But they go through it. They have a purpose. They have drive. And at the end, they have reward. It's the same thing with our life. Don't you want your life to, to soar? You know? And I'm not saying that your life is not soaring. But I know all of us as a human being, we, we get, sometimes, we get, uh, sometimes we get bored with things. We like to keep moving. We like to keep moving. That's a part of us. We like to, we like to achieve. We, li we, we, like to, we like to see things that we like to conquer things. You know, I don't care whether it's uh, um, if you're out hunting or if you're playing video games or if you're, or if you're, or if you're hunting while you're playing video games. <laughs> Ke Cabela, I think they said Cabela. The thing is, you want the trophy. You, you want to go forward. But then after that, you want the next, you want the next thing. Your life has plenty of goals and achievements in it. Even where I am now, even where you are now. Even as old as I am now or young as I am now, yes, you have plenty of goals, plenty of challenges, plenty of achievements that you can achieve if, if you push in, okay? If you push in, but it's going to take prayer, okay? It's going to take prayer to do, those, to do those things. Let's look at a couple more scriptures and then we'll be finished. Let's look at um, John. St. John 14. I, want, I do want you to port to, to go to St. John 14 for those who may be saying, okay, you're saying call unto me. You're saying that there's a way that seems right unto a man and, and, and my way ain't right. And so you're telling me God's got a plan. Okay, but then you're saying I got a call to God and he's going to answer me. All right, well, well, well how's that going to happen? Okay, well, I'm a, we're going to show you in the word how this, how it's going to happen. <laughs> John 14, 21, he that hath my commandments and keep them, he it is, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest himself and, and will manifest myself to him. Now, now, Jesus just said, listen, you're going to have to love me. You're going to have to abide by my word. So you're going to have to follow the Bible. You're going to have to follow the Bible. You want God to answer you. You're going to have to follow this word. When you read this word, and when you read this word, then he'll begin to speak to you from the word, okay? And he's going to start talking to you. He's going to minister to you. He says right there, that I'm going to manif I will manifest. Manifest means show. God's going to show, God's going to show himself to you. Now, 
I'm glad Judas is there because I would have asked the same question. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, not the other Judas that hung himself. He said, Lord, how is it that you will show yourself unto us and not unto the world? He's saying, all right, you're going to show yourself now. You're going to show yourself to us, those who, who abide by your word. How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? But yet not everybody see it. And Jesus said, answered him and said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will, lo- will love him and he will come unto him and make our abode in him. It's through the word of God he's going to show you. He's going to show you through the word. You read the word, God will show you through the word. God, is, God doesn't have to, God doesn't respond to clickbait. Do you see what I'm saying? If you, God, you need to do this. God, look at you like, man. They saying this about you, Lord. Because he's, see, at the end, he has the last say. See, an old bishop told me this a long time ago. Say, deep water don't make noise. God don't have to impress you. God don't have to move. He don't have to do the Mr. Charlie dance to respond to whatever you want him to respond to just because you want to know right now you need to sign. The Jews needed to sign what they wanted to sign. Jesus said, this is the only sign I'm giving you. Three days and nights and then I'm gone. That's your sign right there as, 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 um, as, as, as um, who was in the belly of, of the whale? Jonah was in the belly of the whale. That, that's your sign right there. He doesn't respond to all this. So he says, the way you're going to understand my plan for you is in that word. That's the only thing he's going to tell you. You can build candles around yourself and woosah. You can have a little ball, little ball man that look kind of like me. A little Buddha. He's not responding. He doesn't move. He's not, he's incorruptible. He can't be manipulated. So whatever you tried to do or whatever you're trying to do that somebody else 2,000 years, 3,000 years ago tried to do, it still ain't working. Okay, he's incorruptible. So so that's the way to find, that's the way to know the Lord for yourself. And he'll respond. Now there, he does respond in visions. He does respond in dreams. But the proof, but if you want something, a, a way that's infallible, is the word of God. Apostle tells us plenty of times, you can have plenty of dreams and plenty of visions, but if it don't line up with the word of God, then don't believe the dream, don't believe the vision. You believe the word, okay? All right, I think we're close to the, to the, to the, to the, uh, to the last one. Um, let's look at um, Habakkuk 2 and 23. No, 2 and 2, excuse me. Habakkuk, that's near the end of the, uh, end of the, of the Old Testament. You might get there before me. Because we. These pages are so thin. I'm not trying to pressure, so I got to go through the back. Here we go. All right. Habakkuk 2 and 2. And And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he or that everyone may run that readeth it or that that will follow it and and read it. Um, Once you get that down, once you get the things that you want to deal with down, that's according to God, the plan that the, the plan that you're projecting, write it down. That's according to God's word. You write it down. You write it down. A lot of times that's why there's a lot of confessionals as far as confession books, confession statements, that's that's in this um, that's in this sanctuary because, uh, or in this um, facility, excuse me, or, or on this campus, excuse me, uh, because we always stress reading, professing, read it, see. All right, you're seeing it now. You read it because you're seeing it. It's developing what you see. Um, you're reading it out. You're hearing it, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Write those things down. 
Okay, so Habakkuk 2 and, and, and 2, I, I might as well read verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and it will not, and it won't, it will not um, tarry. So you have to wait for it. I think, uh, I believe that uh, Apostle said this today, I either was uh, Pastor Step or Pastor Andy mentioned something else again about waiting being there's a time that that, that comes uh, that comes around for it write your vision down wait for it be steadfast be strong you know write your plan down now mike tyson had a great saying i love it so every man got a plan until you punch him in the mouth <laughs> you know some of us with our plan that we wrote down we've been punched in the mouth you know i got some plans that i wrote down i got punched in the mouth and I'm, on, and I'm on my backside. But the thing is, you get up. You get up. You get up and you keep going with the plan that God has for you down. Because once again, gate, last thing, Gateway is not um, about, even though Gateway is about the building, and the reason why we're focusing on the building because it's a prophetic sign because things, it's, it talks about the old obstacles, which was a part of an old mindset that, that, that we were dealing against, dealing with, and that's the residue. And so what that goes down is showing us, hey, and everybody that passes by, hey, we're, hey, we're here. But we're here not with the same mindset. We're here with a different mindset. We just want you to experience the newness that's here, you know. But once again, with that being said, it's not about just about each building, but it's about the newness in our thinking and our mindset. We're expecting great things out of everybody this year. For businesses to come out that have never gone out before. Because Apostle can't, uh, uh, I know he said this a long time ago. He said, I am to Apostle this church because every, when it comes down to this church, the inroad, the buck stops with him. He's not saying that to be demeaning or controlling. But he's saying that because that's his responsibility. You're being a CEO of your company. The inroad ends with you. And though Apostle can't be there on your board or doing everything like that, the tithes and the money that you make, that you bring in here, that's because of you. So, so Gateway doesn't control your business, but Gateway influences your business because you've been trained at this World Training Center to do that. And that money is not just to make the place. Listen, I'm a football guy. I like football. All right. One thing that, one thing that uh, th th these 17 to 19 to 20 year olds love are facilities. You can't really pay them too much. Now they do get stiflings and stuff, so they do have money. But they like facilities because it shows you the investment. They show you to the degree that you've invested in their education as well as their lives after their education. That's why they said, why you go, why you went to Georgia, or why you went to South Carolina, or why you go to Ohio State, or why you go to LSU or, or Alabama. Why? Because they have great facilities. Why? They have barbers there. They have, um, they have ping pong. They have all these different things. But, but that in itself is not important. What's important, they develop a culture that we care everything about you. We care about your, your schooling. We care about your health. We care about your nutrition. We care about your family. We got programs that will help you develop or to go for jobs after you, uh, after you leave here because not everybody's going to the pros. All of your life, we're wanting to deal with in these four years that you're here so that when you leave out of here, you'll be prepared and then you'll have a base to come back to and you have alumni that you can come back to and talk about what you've done and partnership in the future and do many different things. It's the same way here. We're building campuses. We're building facilities. Why? Because we're invested in this 25-mile radius. And we're telling people, if you have dreams and goals and want a relationship with God, here it is. But we just can't say it. You have to have alumni. You have to have people who is a walking embodiment of what's being said. That's where we come in. That's where we're the core. 
That's why it's so important to know what we know. It's very important that we embody what we need to embody. It's important that them five books back there that everybody should have already, we should know those five books, have them already in us and, and, and regurgitating it out and living it. Why? Because what you see here, these, these empty chairs, is, is not a representation of a, a, a failure. What it is, it's a representation of the opportunity of the new people that's going to come in that you can share your life with. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and, and there, the, the, the time is, is now to, uh, to, um, to do that. So now let's go to the last one. Uh, I was, um, and that is uh, proceed. That means to proceed. Now it's time to move forward. It's time to take the, the, um, til- take the training wheels off. You've relaxed. You woosa, got your stuff together. You've reflected. You got all that stuff together. Now you've projected. You got these goals down, and it's in line with God's goals. It's in line with God's will. And whatever God's in line with, you can't stop. So now we move forward. And the thing is, we move forward. Um, in Kings, Second Kings, well, let's look at, um, well, you don't have to, but Mark 11, 22 and 26, it says, have the God type of faith. In order to have the God type of faith, you must have the God type of word. You know, because God honors his word and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it must be in line with the word of God. But when you have the God type of faith, there's nothing that can stop you. Nothing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Positively nothing. If you're walking by faith. Now, one thing that is a hindrance of faith that will stop your faith cold is what uh, apostle preached not last week, but the week before that, I believe, is unforgiveness. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you ain't moving anywhere. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care if you relax. I don't care if you uh, re- uh, reflected. I don't care if you projected. If you're still holding on to unforgiveness, if you're still blaming folk and still got resentment against folk, you ain't going nowhere. You're just not going anywhere. And you're fooling yourself and you're wasting your own time. You know. But if you are willing to forgive, because forgiveness has to do with you. If you're willing to forgive any and everybody, set them free so you can set yourself free. Then, then we're moving, then, you know, moving forward. And forgive yourself. Lord have mercy. Forgive yourself. You missed it terribly. Yes. You ought to be embarrassed sometimes. Uh, or I know I've been embarrassed so many times how many times I've missed it. But I'm thankful that God is good to me. He's merciful to me. So I forgive. So, so if God can forgive me and he's bigger than I am, then I can forgive myself and I move forward. It's time to move forward, uh, Gateway. Time to move forward with everything. Everything needs to be new. Last thing is this, 2 Kings chapter 7, 5 and 7. I got to read it out. I love it. I can't help it. And it, and it is the last scripture, folks. I'm, I know some of y'all say I can't trust you when you say last scripture. Yeah, but yeah, it is the last scripture, 2 Kings. I love it, though. I don't know. Um, five, let's it, it's about the four lepers. The apostle preached over this many times. But I love it. I love it. Make sure I got it right. Seven. All right, Second Kings 7. All right, now you notice here. Uh, no reason why I can't find it because I'm in First Kings. I'm sorry. Seven. Second Kings 7. And we're going to look at 5, verse 5 and verse 7. And the lepers said here, why stand ye here? Um, Verse 3, it says, and there were four lepers, lepers men at the entering end of the gate. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? Got to ask you a question. Why are you, are you going to sit here until you die or are you going to move forward? They began to move forward. On um, verse 5, it says, and they rose up in the twilight. I love that. I, I just love this. Somebody need to do a cinematic thing of this. They rose up in the twilights to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no, no man there. And later on in verse 7, it tells you why. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp, as it was, and fled for the life. For, and basically what God did, as the, the leprous, four leprous men 
left for the camp of the Syrians in the twilight when they made the decision to get up and start moving, not when they made the decision, but when they made the decision to follow through with what they was projecting. During that same time, God calls the enemy to hear the sounds of chariots, the sounds of everything during the same time. Verse 5 and verse 7 talks about doing in that period of time in the twilight how God moved on their behalf in the twilight once they started moving. Once we start moving individually and collectively by faith in line with what God wants us to do, miracles happen. Miracles happen, and the things that's impossible are now possible. Listen, let's come on up, please. 